Yo brother, it's time for us to start talking the real man. We've been sugarcoating too much, we've got to start calling everything out for what it is. Yeah, there's like nothing. <laughs> this after. So, so now that I've... Hey guys, I'm here with my own personal EX30. It's about time. I've been uh, testing a demo EX30 from uh, Lean. Uh, use the underground again. See the see the description if you want any absolutely killer discount deals on Big Old Extreme Bow and King Song wheels. Uh, but I had to give that back to Lean, and uh, my personal one arrived. Uh, just a few days ago, you might have seen the EX30 uh, delivery party video of mine. I'll post it up here. And uh, so I'm excited to have this. I've not ridden it. I've had it. It's been sitting around about four or five days. I'm waiting for some stuff. I'm going to be uh, upgrading it. For, unfortunately, I'm not going to have the... I went with the Grizzla system for all the protection and... Um, it's probably going to be at least three more weeks before I get that. So I'll be riding with the stock pads. Uh, but today, I am going to upgrade to a coil shock. And I'll show you how I'm going to do that. Now, um, some of you may have seen the video where I updated my, uh, upgraded my suspension on my master with this shock. It's been quite a while ago. Lots of people have been uh, switching to uh, coil shocks uh, since then and uh, actually I like the shock that comes the stock shock but I do like the ride of the coil shock better personally it's a more of a plush ride and uh, fortunately uh, this one is going to go on a lot easier than the master hopefully let me show you why to install this shock, you're going to have to remove the old one. And to do that, you need to remove this bolt and this bolt. Now on the Master and the Master Pro, these bolts are behind the battery packs. So you have to remove the battery packs, the rear battery packs, to get to these. Not horrible, but obviously it takes uh, time. In this case, you have direct access to this bolt without having to touch anything else in the wheel. So this new shock should go in super easy. Let's uh, start by taking off the existing shock. First, we have to remove the air pressure from the shock. Now, you could just press this, but uh, a bunch of the lubricant inside the shock just spits out when you do that. So I'm going to use uh, the pump to do to do that let's see how much air I my loss in the shock over like five days I think I put about 250 in it I think I did yeah well it's definitely below 200 but now I just use this guy. Okay. That's another reason I like the coil shocks. You don't have to worry about losing air pressure. Okay, no more air in that. Okay, I think I will loosen the bottom one first. It's a five millimeter wrench. Put one on either side. Well, the back came off super easy. I think I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, Loctite thread locker in there when I put this back. Well, let's see, I should be able to just push this out actually. 
There you go. Top one had thread locker in it. Save these. Okay, this bottom one's getting hung up a little bit. Looks like it's hitting the battery cable, so I just squeeze the battery cable a little bit. Bit. There it goes. And there we go. Put the package this up as a spare. You never know. Now, as I had did before, we need we need to remove these spacers and this internal um, metal sleeve. You could try hammering them out, but uh, I'm going to use a, a large socket that this inner metal sleeve can slide into. I'll just uh, loosely tape this in place And I'm going to use a clamp and then this is sized to press against the metal sleeve on this side. socket. Okay. Bigger socket looks like that'll fit. Need to go the deeper socket. I should have watched my other video to see what I used. <laughs> Probably this. Let's try it again. I 
I know I could cut all this out and I get complaints about long videos, but uh, you know, I don't really care. <laughs> you guys can watch it or you can't, don't have to watch it, right? But I know when I'm looking for detailed information about how to get something done, I kind of like to see where steps are not skipped, where magically all of a sudden something is done. All right. There we go. And uh, do the same thing on this piece, and then we're ready to work more on the shock. Okay, here is the issue with using this coil shock is that it won't fully fit. And I had the same issue with the master, and what I ended up doing was grinding this knuckle here but we're going to grind something else this time. So what's causing the problem is that this distance shoulder between the hole and this piece is about 1 16th of an inch too short. Now before I had ground that knuckle down like I said, but this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to grind this shoulder off about a sixteenth of an inch down. And I have uh, Roger to thanks for this idea. He recently installed this shock on his EX30 and he chose to grind this down. The reason I didn't do it the first time on my master was I was afraid uh, if I ground this down, am I gonna break through into the chamber here? But uh, Roger did it and he didn't break through. Uh, if I ever get, find a destroyed one of these things, I'll. I'll cut it in half and see uh, how thick this material is. Hopefully, maybe it's maybe it's real thick. I have it clamped in my wooden uh, wooden clamp, which is clamped to my table top. Going to use a grinder. And wish me luck. <laughs> All right, after about 15 minutes of grinding and two test fits, that's how much I had to remove. And uh, there's no binding, nice and loose in there. That's definitely easier than trying to grind those knuckles inside the shell area. Now you're gonna wanna add some preload on the spring. If, if, actually, if you don't, the spring is going to hit the linkages. And uh, this is the easiest way to do it. You just twist this, hold the spring and hold it and twist. And the friction grabs this nut. Let's see if that's enough. All right, this last bit is a little tricky. You need to line up the two holes on linkages with the hole through the, sh to, through the shock. And to do that, it's easiest if you just lay the wheel on its side because on its side, then you can move the suspension as needed and moving it up and down, you can line up these three holes perfectly and then uh, just you saw the hardware. All right, back together and I've made a few adjustments. One thing, I think I needed to loosen up the spring. I had a bit too much uh, compression on it. And you can do that with a hammer and a beefy screwdriver. From in here, you can just tap on that nut slowly. It takes time, but you can uh, adjust it, which I did. And uh, so right now when I stand on the wheel, so I moved the O-ring that's usually sitting up here, moved it down to the bottom, stood on the wheel. This is how much uh, sag I get when I stand on it. 
I don't have all my gear on. Probably all my gear, backpack, how I usually ride, 20 to 25 extra pounds. So this will probably move up a little bit more. Uh, rode around just a little bit, jumped off some um, 7, 8 inch curbs, and this moved up to maybe around here. Definitely feels a little firmer with the new linkages, linkage geometry that Begilda is using versus the originals that came like with the Master, my version 1 Master and Master Plus, Master, Pro Master. Um, the with those linkages uh, definitely is a softer ride. I think if you were a much lighter person, I would probably buy this shock with the 650 pound spring. Still feels nice. Feel, I mean, a little, little firmer, and um, I don't have to worry about air. Uh, and I do have rebound adjustment, so I can tune it in just like I, I want. So look, there's and there's different shocks. There's uh, versions. There's a version that uh, fits without having to make any modification, but that usually is out of stock. I bought this from Amazon, I bought it last night, got it today. Uh, the other one, usually it's uh, AliExpress, kind of wait time, so it could take you about three weeks, four weeks to get it. Uh, yeah, but uh, bottom line is if you wanna uh, take out your the stock shock, it's uh, pretty easy to, to upgrade if you think it's an upgrade to a coil shock. All right, guys, I hope this was useful. And until next time, safe riding. So uh, this is the next day. I'm filming this video because uh, last night I put the coil shock on. So we've ridden about 45 miles now on the wheel. And uh, just interesting, so this is Don's with the stock shock pump to, do you have any know what? Like 250. 250. So, plus seven. Now, here's mine. Now, and I don't have to, you know, press much. Wait, wait, switch. Okay. So that, that I show how, how I put it. Yeah, there's like nothing. <laughs> you just have to. So, so now that I've done this shock upgrade, ridden it, I love it. It's definitely a... Uh, for me, it's worth it if you want a plush ride. It's down. <laughs> 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 but for you guys who want a plush ride, there you go. <laughs> You're flopping all over the place. Oh, look at how big this is. It's not that bad when you're riding it. <laughs> all right, guys. So, uh, so I stand by my stand by this upgrade. <laughs>